let's just get flavor here and twist that around. I'm using a piece of felt that I've already squished together from the uh, fluffy type of uh, fleece down here. So I'm going to put some color on this. Needle felting is nothing more than tangling wool. That's all felt is. So these wool strands have little barbs on them. This, these needles have little barbs on them. So when you start combining things that have little barbs on them, they start going together. And as you can see on the back, it's coming through. If I do this long enough, it will become one piece of fabric. But I'm not going to sit here all day doing that. I can use this little needle felting machine. It has six needles in it. And it may be small like a sewing machine, but unlike the sewing machine, there's, there's nothing running through it. There's a piece of felt right here. Or, I'm sorry, a piece of a foam right there. So this is a much quicker way of doing it. And it goes like crazy. long enough it'll be one piece of fabric and I cannot peel any of these colors off so like the vests that are over there like the color I put on this it's one piece of fabric now and so those colors will not come off the really nice thing about wool is that it's washable all of these things all those wall hangings the vests, everything here is washable in cool water like you would a really good sweater it will wick moisture away from your body and every strand is hollow so when you warm up that hollow air you're insulated and that's why wool is warm so it is washable it is durable it breathes it's wonderful and really lightweight wool can be even after doing all that here yes you can wash it sure is that hot water I wouldn't use, well, I've washed them in hot water already, but if you wash a, a good shrink. sweater in cool water, then uh, it shouldn't go in, it shouldn't shrink. When I get my fabric to this stage right here, I put it in the washer with as hot a water as I can get in there because those fibers, when they begin to shrink a little bit, they tighten, and that makes it even more secure. <clears throat> this is one of the strongest fibers. The, that vest up there, you could not pull that apart. And it's all started out like this. On the far end down there uh, is raw fleece right off the sheet. And if you move, move down this way, there you go. This is, you can smell, this is right off the sheet. But then, when it's washed, it comes and combed or carded, it comes back to me in either this form, which is batting, or roving, which is like this. And feel this. All of this is very touchable. Ooh, see how soft and so wonderful that is? Spinners just go crazy do that with it. And then I can dye it. I use acid fast dye, which means this is in here, it won't run. And so I take this and dye it like that. And then I can lay it on pieces of this. This is the same as that. This has been run through the felting machine. So it squishes it down into this fabric. And now my machine is 48 inches wide, so I can make yardage from it. And that's how I can get these bigger pieces or get pieces to make uh, folding with. This particular piece was had the wool dyed. Then we tore it apart and laid it on a carding machine. So it has a belt. And 
we laid a row of blue, a row of red, row of blue, and when it went through the carding machine, then it came out in these colors, in these stripes. And, and you're welcome to feel and touch any of this, this stuff. And it, this is very, very soft, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I look forward to me wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> other pieces of wool, other things you can do. Coasters, for instance. Wool will glue, and so it glues onto cork, and we can have coasters. I'm not sure they're very practical, but they look good, <laughs> because you can't really wipe them off. Some breeds of sheep have naturally curly locks, and a lot of the craft people like to buy these because they're Santa Claus beards. And, of course, I could be a witch with <laughs> You can dye the curly locks some different colors. There's, I can't imagine much of anything that you cannot do with wool. In fact, wool is also fire retardant, and uh, the army now is using very lightweight wool for underwear. Underwear for the guys in Afghanistan in particular are over there because the other underwear they had had polyester in it. And if they if the guys caught fire, oh, then yeah. you try to pull that polyester off and it pulled the skin off with it and it did more damage actually than the bomb thing did. So now they're using real lightweight wool because it is fire retardant. It will not stick to the skin. And so they, they have cut the damage and the loss to skin tremendously. Another use for it you might not think about are insoles for shoes. And I met a group the other day from California who are using a blend of wool like this and hemp. And they blend all of that together into a fabric and then have a die cut that's small, medium, large, and they cut out the insoles for shoes, and you can trim them to fit your shoe, and they're washable. So I cannot imagine a place that you're not going to be able to use wool. One of the other products that I make that's it's kind of nasty fun, in a way, because I call them plant pods, and you know when you dig a hole to set out a bush or a tree or something like that. You have to make it deep and you want to water it and, and use fertilizer, all that sort of thing. In the plant pod, I make two big circles of this for whatever size hole you need. Sew around those and then I take the leavings of where we have sheared the sheep and all the nasty stuff that's on the sheep and stuff those plant pods with that and then sew it up. So you end up with a fabric that's going to retain moisture in the bottom of the hole and it will feed if it has a natural manure that's down there too. It does not burn plants and it keeps those roots moist longer so you don't have to water as much. So we use wool in all different places. It goes from sheep to wall, sheep to shawl. Wool goes just about everywhere. Now, it, this wool right here, is that straight off a sheep? Yes, the smelling one on the end. Is <laughs> straight off the sheep? Yeah. Yes, it is. And you're now welcome. Why does it feel different from a wool sweater? Or the breed? Oh, okay. The breed. Because wool sweaters can be itchy, but this does not feel. Right. Right. It doesn't. And right. I'm just wondering why. I can't usually wear wool. You said it's itchy. I can't imagine wool. Yeah, uh, this kind I can't command. That's great. So what does that, the breed? It's the breed. Uh, actually, it is, to be really technical, it's the micron count of the strands in there. And the micron count for my particular breed of sheep is around 16 to 18, and that's just above cashmere. Okay. And what is your... Breed. They're called Cormo. It's a Corydale Merino. C-O-R-M-O. Cormo. The Corydale Merino. Merino, of course, very soft. Yes. Corydale is also soft, but it's got a longer fiber and a little bit stronger. So you blend, so you mix those good aspects yes. together and get heaven. Yeah, right. <laughs> Other questions? 
This is a once a year crop, so to speak. We shear only once a year. So in April, I look forward to uh, what I've done for the last 12 months. Yeah. And what about for rugs? I went to Berea a few years back and someone had a wool rug. Yes. That's I, a different breed. Uh, I use heavy. Yeah. It is different, or I use, uh, I've got some other breeds of sheep out there too, and their wool is coarser. Yeah. It's still good, but it's coarser. But I make rugs, and, and I do wall hangings from yeah. that also, yeah. because I save the good stuff for okay. clothing. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions, Alicia? Thank you. Thank you, Alice. And thank you.